With a common hemodialysis system, we use an artificial kidney uh, built with a membrane less or more porous. But uh, this allows only to clear uremic toxins of light of or middle molecular weight. With HFR, the target is to get rid also of toxins of high molecular weight. Therefore, HFR uses three different parts. The first part is an artificial kidney with a very high porosity, and this allows to get rid of uh, uremic toxins of high molecular weight. Then the blood containing uh, those toxins runs on the second part, and this part is a resin cartridge. And the toxins will be absorbed on the surface of this resin. And then the effluent of the second part runs through a third part, which is a common hemodialysis system. And so we can eliminate as well the light molecular weight toxins as the very high molecular weight toxins. Now we will have a look how it works practically. The Supra HFR technique we use is done with a Flexia dialysis machine from the Belco company. When we switch on the dialysis machine, the software starts up. Electrical, hydraulic and blood tests are performed. This takes about 12 minutes. When these tests are successfully completed, the system is ready to build up. We attach the acid concentrate and bicarbonate to the unit. We make a stable dialysate conductivity of 14 millisiemens per centimeter and bicarbonate of 3 millisiemens per centimeter. Building the extracorporeal circuit can happen after the dialysate is composed or even simultaneously. The disposable scene here in a cardboard box consists of three parts. Capillary dialyzers for hemodiofiltration with reinfusion, HFR. A sorbent cartridge for the regeneration of the ultrafiltrate, SupraSorb. and tubing for hemodiafiltration with endogenous reinfusion. It is important to avoid the risk of infection. Therefore, we work aseptically during assembly as well as during treatment. The cartridge is placed into the holder. To avoid alarms during installation, it is important that the cartridge is firmly pressed into its holder. The arterial line should be in the upper chamber of the dialyzer. This is the part where only convective transport occurs. The venous line must be connected to the lower chamber of the dialyzer. This lower part is used for diffusion as well as for ultrafiltration. The green substitution gate is also an outlet of the dialysate that is made in the device and that can be used for the unlined priming and restitution. This blue connection is the venous pressure measurement that passes through an air detection device. There are also two connectors for infusion syringes. In the Supra HFR setting, we use one connection for the administration of anticoagulants. The venous and arterial blood lines are connected to the blue and the red flushing port. 
and then both lines go through the sensor block. This sensor block measures the blood volume in the arterial line, whereas the blue line passes through yet another air detection system. When the system detects air, a clamp will close the line to the patient and the safety is guaranteed. The connection of the infusion line is done in the convective part of the dialyzer. This will generate the infusion flow of the ultrafiltrate and forward it to the sorbent cartridge. We use the sorbent cartridge in a vertical position. The flow is indicated by in and out arrows so that the adsorption ability of the sorbent cartridge is optimally used. Finally, the dialysis connectors are installed by using the counter current principle. After closing the door, the cartridge is pressed through a mechanism. Now we can select the SuperSorb option. The device performs pressure tests to check the integrity of the disposables. When finished, the circuit is ready to prime. We only start with priming when the patient has arrived. This to avoid a standstill of the liquid in the circuit. During the priming, two and a half liters of substitution fluid flows through the circuit. This happens in stages, so as to eliminate all air from the circuit. When the priming ends, the device is ready to connect the patient to the dialysis machine. The vascular access is an essential part. The Supra HFR technique requires a double needle system. The connection of the patient is done in an aseptic way. We puncture the arteriovenous fistula with catheter needles and fix them with a transparent dressing. After checking the patency of the access, we disconnect the red and blue connectors from the machine and connect these blood lines to the catheter needles of the patient. We enter the duration time of the treatment, the ultrafiltration volume, the anticoagulation, and the sodium and bicarbonate settings. The infusion pump that extracts the ultrafiltrate of the convective part of the dialyzer will progressively accelerate automatically up to 3.6 liters per hour. You also have the possibility to manually set the speed of the infusion pump if necessary. During the treatment, we monitor the infusion, the arterial, the pre-filter, and the venous pressure. Careful monitoring of the patient, the dialysis machine, and the extracorporeal circuit is essential to a successful treatment. <laughs>